Welcome to the Hiring and Empowering Solutions podcast. My name is Molly McGrath, and this podcast is dedicated to providing the key ingredients to transform your employees into a dream team that create consistent results in every aspect of the business, including team empowerment, leadership, business development, communication, hiring, and sadly, when you get to that point, possibly firing. As some of the country's leading staffing and management consultants, we help business owners, i.e. entrepreneurs, and the team that support them, i.e. entrepreneurs, to powerfully connect and work together to grow the business and a dream team. So today's podcast we are very excited about is titled, How to Empower Your Employees to Step Up and Lead creating entrepreneurs in entrepreneurs world. This is a number one question for the past 22 years that we would get when we would speak at conferences across the country. How in the world can I get my employee to step up and lead? How can I clone my employee to think, act, and behave like I do? And that's always been the number one question that entrepreneurs are struggling with. And after working with entrepreneurs and the team members who support them, we realize there really is that missing link between the ability of an entrepreneur to connect with their key employees despite you know sharing the same goals. Both are committed to the business. They both want the company to succeed. The entrepreneur wants to make more money for self, for the business. The employee obviously is very invested in making more money and growth and opportunities. They both buy into the vision. But there's a very real gap gap in the ability to communicate day to day and to produce the results possible. We hear so often from business owners that saying, I can't get my employees to step up to get the big picture. I can't get them to get it into their bones. And although employers might think that they want people who would just do what they were told. The truth is that when it comes to making the boss employee relationship productive, most small business owners really don't have all the answers either. That's a super giant secret employees. A lot of times employees believe that, well, if you're smart enough or somebody gave you the quote unquote approval to hang your own shingle, to open your own business, we deal with by and large attorneys, you made it through law school, you're uh, uh, an attorney, then you must have all the answers. And the, uh, the the entrepreneur doesn't. And, and as employees, you know, you we believe that you do have all the answers and secretly entrepreneurs are begging for somebody to be able to meet them where they're at and to to help them and come with ideas and insight because they're stuck in the conference room all day they're meeting with existing and or prospective clients they're putting out fires they're doing the business building things and they're not on the front lines they don't have the insight that you have when you're greeting and meeting um, people in the reception area or working within the documents or the software, et cetera. And employees want a job where they're really included and they're excited and uh, passionate about. They want the opportunity to grow and make a difference in a place where they ultimately can retire. As many of you know, we have a hiring side of our business and and we do interviews all day, every day. And that's what we hear from people. I want a place that I can call home. I don't want to hop around, especially since 2008, when the job market and the business world completely, financial world just completely tanked and people were being laid off. And since then, you'll see so many gaps in, in years of employment on resumes. And it's not typically the employees doing it's because uh, they're at the mercy of the success and the viability of a business. And that's what we hear. They want to work where it's not just about a paycheck. They want to work somewhere where they have autonomy, where they they ultimately can retire. And they ideally would love a place where they have permission to grow and stretch and uh, use their voice and not be shamed for that. And or many employees say to us, they don't want to be, quote unquote, in trouble. And they want somewhere they belong, where they have a degree of partnership, where their opinion is valued, 
not always agreed with, but it's valued, it's welcomed, and they have permission for it. And when I use partnership, I don't mean their names on the door, but that it has the essence of a partnership where there's ebb and flow. So in short, the most committed among them want to be entrepreneurs of the team. That's what we've seen and hear, heard for the past 22 years. Working for and with an entrepreneur, taking direct responsibility and accountability for thinking and acting like a business owner, there is no greater um, honor for an employee to have the opportunity for that. And we on this podcast really want to begin to address the challenges that employees and business owners, entrepreneurs, bosses, whatever you want to coin in uh, what terminology resonates with you, face in making this goal a reality and making it work and keeping it consistent and off the shelf. Often entrepreneurs will say they buy into their boss's vision, but then they're disappointed to find out that the boss isn't showing up as in really being accountable, having their head in the game, keeping their word, showing up for team meetings, for internal events, get meeting deadlines, um, work, whatever it means when it comes to the business. And the employees hang around not knowing if they should just find another job or wait for the boss to either engage or and or re-engage again. And it creates an incredible amount of stress and uncertainty for the employee that shows up to the boss, where it shows up like the boss really is not caring or invested in how the employees translate that is they're not caring or investing in the business. And then for them, that becomes very scary and it creates a tremendous amount of uncertainty. And from the boss's perspective, they feel like they they want to get off this merry-go-round, if you will, of having to keep firing and hiring staff members or spending all this time, money, energy, resources into helping them grow and training them, but then having them quit. And we hear that all the time. They're sick of the transition and having that turnstile, if you will, at their front door that costs an enormous amount of money to find someone, hire them, train them. And then the employer feels like they're at hostage or sort of shackled to the employee and not wanting to go through the process again. So sometimes they might keep the quote unquote good enough employee. And we hear so often from both sides that how do we change this and how do we eradicate the entire dysfunctional cycle and create a new way of doing business uh, day in and day out and when things are flowing smoothly and um, when things are going poorly like how do we navigate all this regardless of if it's good or bad but staying out of the darkness if you will and the frustrating moments and still be able to have a process and a communication style and a communication, you know, North Star, if you will, to use as an anchor that will allow us to navigate these two millimeter shifts that we talk about so often and really keep that dynamic um, communication between the employees and the employers that will be able to create a difference, make a difference in performance and as well as business and uh, you know personal and professional satisfaction. So this is what we're really passionate about. We want people to know that it is possible for employees to bridge the gap with the employer and that they can have big picture conversations with the employee, the good, the bad, the ugly, And as business owners, you don't have to feel like you're a lone ranger making all the decisions by yourself. We feel like that all the time. You know, we hear that all the time. That's how they feel. So our vision is really for this podcast to be able to um, support you all and to open up the doors and show you what's possible in the relationship between the business owner and employees and really help support you and encourage you to empower your employees to step up and lead so you can reap the benefit of having a team that is committed to 
just as committed to the company's success that you are and really um, show you that it does not have to be hard. You hear, if you've read our blogs or our books or anything we've said for years, just one small step at a time. And really that's what it requires is time, attention, and yes, sometimes tough conversations, but it's far less time and energy that you'll be spending you know, dealing with drama and consistent efforts and results versus having intentional time that you're dedicating to embracing a new vision that'll eradicate the uncertainty that some bosses feel when dealing with team that and team that feel like there's a lack of a plan and a North Star and really understanding how to make that relationship work. Because at the end of the day, we believe in the, the, the mindset of that employees don't leave and employees don't get fired and bosses aren't put in compromising positions to fire people because of money or paycheck. That's what we hear all the time from people. Oh, she left because she was offered a better job and I couldn't compete with the salary or the benefits or the perks or whatever it was. And, you know, sometimes I'll say, can you give me her phone number? I just want to, I want to give her a call and see, you know, so I get some data and insight for the next person that we're going to place in that position that she sat in. And when we called the people inevitably, they're like, no, it wasn't that at all. It was the lack of connection and communication. There was no consistency in that regard. And that's what we hear. There are numerous studies that prove that, that on Sun Lambo, you know, at the end of the day, we're human beings and, and people are social creatures and people need people in order to be well and to thrive. They need feedback. They need communication. They need to know that they are generally appreciated and um, that they're part of a team. They need to know that where North Star is, are we headed in the right direction? What's working, what's not working? And that is what we find missing, unfortunately, more than 50% of the time. In all of our years of experience, most employees don't work out because they were hired and, and left alone and left to try to figure it out. And the connection and communication were either inconsistent or non-existent. So Lainey and I, many, many years ago, when we were writing our first book, we got a focus group together of support team members across the country. And it was a giant attempt to figure out where the disconnect lies between the boss and the team when trying to reach a common goal within a small business. And we were absolutely astounded at what we discovered. We wanted, um, you know, to figure out what was going on, not from a place of fear or to scare the entrepreneurs, but really to inspire them and crack open the heads of their employees and say, you know, this is what they're telling us from a place that they can hear our commitment um, to transform the employee uh, employer relationship and giving the team the opportunity to be honest while respectful. Um, because at the end of the day, the common themes that we heard out of the conversation were uh, that the team wants to be included in the good, the bad, and the uncertainty. And many times the employer was saying, well, I, I don't want to freak them out and have them quit. I don't want to, they don't need to know that. They just need to worry about what's right in front of them. And a lot of times the team said, no, if we knew this ahead of time, and again, it's all in the delivery of the information, but we could have probably triaged and or stopped it or turned it around. The other common themes that we heard is the inconsistent, unintentional, or lack of communication that strangles all faith and hope for the business, for the employee, and for them. They just, with the lack, I always say the 
the root of all anxiety is lack of information. And so when they didn't have that information, or at least uh, the information, and then the problem solving and the solution with it, then they really didn't have anything to anchor to. So they were just left in the dark. And when you're left in a place of wonder and worry, that's where drama and rumors and um, disengagement, it's a breeding ground for that. So once there was a willingness to shed light on what's not working, then and only then can you pave the path of possibility and discernment. So that was just really amazing for us to hear. These are the exact words out of your employees' mouths. To hear the commitment and the tenacity and just the unwavering faith, if they had that information and they had a peek into the insight of the business, they're willing to move mountains. I mean, a theme that made us so very proud to be part of this industry was a deep, deep, deep gratitude that these team members shared about being even being considered important enough to be included in the ins and outs of your business. And not one of them took that responsibility lightly. In fact, they're losing sleep over it. And the ones that didn't have any insight or information, but had an idea or grumblings, they see the calendar being blank, or they see that the phone's not ringing, et cetera. It, they were losing sleep over it, and they were trying to come up with strategies and solutions, but they didn't want to open their voice, their mouth, or express their voice and share anything because the entrepreneur and the business owner wasn't saying anything about it, so they didn't want to rock the boat, which was really disheartening for us to hear. So what we did is we really categorized the responses into three main categories. The first was, you know, we talked to them about what's your great joy and what you love most about what you do. The second was, what are your biggest frustrations working with your entrepreneur? And the third was, if you could change one thing about your job, what would it be? So I'm going to share with you today um, some of the voices from the quote unquote unofficial boardroom of your team members. So number one, what's your greatest joy and what do you love most about what you do? And this is what we heard from people. The value of what we are doing when I explain it to clients what we can do for them is so very powerful and empowering that I can have an effect on someone's world and help them in such a big, big way. That's coming from a receptionist. When you step back and say, wow, maybe I didn't get everything I wanted to get done today or this week, but a client just thanked me for eliminating stress in their life and taking care of things to them because my attorney let me shadow the past three vision meetings that they did. And now I fully understand why clients are hiring us over the guy down the street. Another thing that we heard is we all have that social worker in us and we all really just want to help people, especially when you see things that go right. It adds fuel to your day. It makes you want to do it time and time again and stay late at night. When the client at the end comes to you out of a meeting and with the boss and is giving you hugs and says, thank you, there is nothing better than that. These are just a few of the things that we're hearing. So when we hear from entrepreneurs and they say, you know, I can't, everybody packs up at five o'clock. My employees don't stay late. You know, they're calling in sick. They're coming in late. That is not the experience that we had for people that were given a peek into the inside of the business. They're able to experience the client meetings. They're able to um, shadow the attorney. These are these are comments from employees where the attorney did open up 
the boardroom, if you will, and let them come and sit into the meetings. They let them experience what the client was experiencing from the inside, which absolutely supported them when they were helping clients before they came clients and helping the prospective clients and answering the phone and being able to paint the picture of exactly what they were going to experience when they started working with someone. I, I So many of them said working with someone who is so amazingly intelligent and creative. And when my boss comes to me and starts to ask me for my opinion, there is nothing more gratifying and satisfying. So for us, we really want to empower you entrepreneurs, attorneys that are listening to this podcast to let go of the protection where you feel like you need to pre- protect your employees from the ins and outs, the good, the bad, the ugly, the 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 potential uh, pitfalls and or things that might be occurring and share it with them in a responsible, respectful way. Because when you do that, that is how you get a lifer. That is how you get a um, empowered employee that will stay late, that will work weekends, that'll come in early if need be to help you and get behind you and protect your back to be able to carry and fulfill not only the mission, vision, values of the business, but hopefully, as you heard, accomplish the client's goals. Because when they can sit in the conference room and they can experience And they can be involved in why clients are coming into you in the beginning, which regardless of what area you work in, it's tremendous. It's usually with a tremendous amount of fear and anxiety. And then they walk out with completely emptying their backpack in your conference room and feeling lighter and uh, hopeful and more joyful than they did when they walked in to your meeting. Here's the second question that we got or that we asked in the focus group. What is your greatest frustration working with an entrepreneur? And we really want you to hear some of these because again, in every breakdown is a breakthrough. So number one, when I stop believing in my boss because I don't have faith or trust that they will get it done, I would not hire my own boss as a client. I don't have that feeling And I hate feeling that way. It's very disheartening, but we never follow through on anything that we say we're going to do. Again, sharing, allowing and creating that safe place for your employee to be able to express that. And trust us, there's probably, if you're not experiencing that now, you probably have or will at some point if you're not honoring your deadlines, if you're not creating safety nets in your practice and allowing them to run your day, to manage your day, letting them in on all the things that you have coming at you and letting them know all the responsibilities and deadlines that you have and really bringing them into that fold so they can serve as your project manager, as your executive assistant, as your production cop, as your COO, whatever you want to coin it and call it. They are begging, begging to support you and help you with that. Number two, the entrepreneur won't let go and trust the key people in the company. If they would, I think things would run much smoother. I realize that it's their baby and it's their name on the building. And I appreciate that it must be hard to do that, but it's crucial at some point in time for the best of the business and for any level of growth. So that's a big, big one that we heard over and over again. And again, we have many of these within our book. You can download from our homepage on our website and and get all of these. But I'm just reading a few of these that we got from the focus group. Letting go of control, it's, it's hard. We get it. We understand that. But it's critical if you're at a precipice or you're at a tipping point within your business or even truly if you're just hanging your shingle for the first time. If there's one habit that we would say for you to really spend some concentrated time on adopting is the ability, and I always say controlled letting go. 
So you can start with something as simplistic as um, the calendar and allowing them to schedule and manage your calendar. And then when you have proof of concept there, you can move on to your email or your phone messages or what have you. But many times as business owners, especially as solo small, when we built the business, when it was just us and or when everything's built on our reputation and branding and we're so accustomed to giving white glove service and over delivering to our clients, we feel like nobody can do it the way I do. Nobody cares as much as I do. The clients expect to hear from me. They will not come back if I start delegating some of this to an assistant. And that couldn't be further from the truth because if you have an assistant that can at least communicate, again, we're talking about what humans want is communication and connection. And when you give that to them and they're able to respond within an hour versus you, and we all know this, and when you're like, no, it's got to be me and 48, 72 hours go by and you still haven't gotten a response, put yourself in the particular perspective and or existing client shoes or referral source shoes. Lack of information again and communication is what causes frustration and anxiety. So hearing from somebody would be a thousand times better than hearing from you personally. And you can always set up that conversation and say the attorneys in back-to-back meetings, but it was very important to them that they did get a response, that you got a response in a very timely manner, and they asked that I did this on their behalf. Just think about that and think about that yourself. If you received communication like that, because you all know you've been on the receiving end of people not getting back to you, and how great would that be? And that'll give you more fuel to actually let go, and it'll give you permission to believe in that as a concept. So we get it that the letting go control, bringing your team members into the fold is, is it's hard. It's a new concept. And sometimes you might have evidence that that didn't work out before because you tried that with two or three other employees in your past and it didn't work out so well. But we're just going to ask you to burn the boats on your past and and not really come from that frame of reference, but come from beginner's mind and come from a place of possibility that this time with having us in your corner to support you and shepherd you and having 22 years of evidence, if you will, that this absolutely does um, work, then hopefully from that place, you're willing to, as we say in the coaching world, try it on and at least do it one small step at a time and start playing with that. So in this work, in this podcast, one thing that we are really gonna be trying to support you with and be a place of resource for you is to get out of what hasn't worked for you in the past and get you to a place of excitement and and really embracing if you want this kind of employee or as we call them an entrepreneur who cares who you can depend on who um, is committed willing to show up and um, take a bullet for you and to have your back and to protect your time energy and confidence and get you out of the cycle of hiring firing training rehiring and believing that that's never ever gonna go away, we really want you to, if you're willing to embrace it and try it on and start a new um, way of communication and connection and building that into your calendar week in and week out with your team, we really wanna support you. And that's what we're gonna be doing here week after week with these podcasts is just really giving you a structure, a system, a process, a strategy for you to anchor into creating that entrepreneur entrepreneur relationship and 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 learning how to empower your employees to step up and lead, but also giving them the permission that you're willing to trust them if you're hiring in the right way and giving them the opportunity to actually prove that they can do it. And employees, on the flip side, if you're an employee listening, also giving you the tips 
of how to instill that confidence in your attorney, in your entrepreneur, that you do have their back, that you do have an appreciation for what's coming at them day in and day out. You do understand their world and what um, all the demands on them from personal to professional to community to referral sources. Many of you are in the personal service industry and we don't take lightly how much blood, sweat, tears you've put into building your brand and building your business. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're still in business and chances are you're on a path of controlled growth. And so our greatest wish and our greatest commitment and mission for you in the work that we're doing is to get you both on the same playing field with not only um, confidence and excitement for your future, but also with a proven strategy, because I think that's really, really important to know that this isn't just a coffee clutch or just some drive by tips and techniques which we've all experienced that. And it's like, yeah, throw it against the wall, see what sticks. No, the work that we've done for 22 years, has we've had over 1,400 law firms go through it. And we have success stories on both the employee side, on the entrepreneur, i.e. boss's side, in addition to the client as well as the referral source side. So we really look forward. We're so excited to help transform your practice, number one, but also to transform the relationship that you have internally within your office and get you all to a place of joy and ease and fun, hopefully again. Visit our website at hiringandempoweringsolutions.com and download our free book called Entrepreneurs in an Entrepreneur's World, How to Empower Your Employees to Step Up and Lead. And this book is written both for the business owner as well as the employee. If you are an employee and you really want to learn what it means to become a value creator and a superstar, there are some amazing tips and techniques in here. And if you are an entrepreneur and you want to learn how to craft and present the conversation to your team in regards to how to get them to become what we call a superstar entrepreneur, this book is absolutely for you. So we love that you are listening to this podcast. Please drop us a line with any feedback, suggested topics you'd like to hear. And absolutely, we'd love to hear about your victories creating entrepreneurs in an entrepreneur's world. Thank you.